Drafting Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round is the kind of move that would get a general manager fired within two years. There is some good in his film, but the bad sticks out like a sore thumb, and if a GM is willing to ignore it, they should be gone. From Daniel Jeremiah to Mel Kuyper to Lance Erline, there aren't many analysts that don't have the 6'4 Brian Thomas Jr. going somewhere in the first round. The consensus is that the speedy receiver will go somewhere around pick 17. Thomas is widely considered the next best receiver after the big three of Marvin Harrison Jr., Romo Dunze, and his LSU teammate Malik Napers. So if all of these guys think that Thomas is worthy of a first round pick, why is a small channel like us disagreeing with them? Well, the answer is simple. We are seeing something those analysts are overlooking. Before we start telling you all the bad with Brian Thomas Jr., let us extend an olive branch. We are going to spend the next few minutes talking about all the good within his game. Thomas Jr. is an extremely fast receiver. He posted a 4-3-3 40-yard dash at the combine, and it shows on his tape. Even when DBs were giving him a cushion, he was still able to blow by them. His speed shows up best on goal routes. According to Next Gen Stats, he reached a top speed of 22.91 miles per hour while running a goal route. That's over one mile per hour faster than any other receiver. This guy is also a jump ball specialist, which probably comes from his basketball roots. He does a great job of timing his jump so he can always catch it at the highest point. According to PFF, he came down with over 50% of the contested balls that were thrown his way. Brian Thomas Jr. also practically lives in the end zone. He led the country with 17 touchdowns last season. He's a very smooth athlete who can get in and out of breaks easily. He also has a wide catch radius because of his larger frame and jumping ability. Lastly, he gives good effort when it comes to blocking for his teammates. Now that we've shown that we don't hate Thomas Jr. and that there is a lot of good within this game, let's get to why you are here. And what are we going to see that every other analyst is failing to see? First, Thomas seemed to have a really limited route tree at LSU. He mostly ran routes from the speedy receiver pack. These would be your hitches, shallows, comebacks, and go routes. Routes that don't normally require much nuance. The numbers also back up what we saw in the film. Thomas was targeted 18 times on medium routes or routes that were between 10 to 19 yards deep, compared to 22 targets on deep routes, routes that were 20 plus yards, and 43 targets on short routes, routes that were 9 yards or less. For comparison, Malik Napers, a receiver in the same offense, had 34 medium targets, 29 deep targets, and 53 short targets. The fact that Thomas's medium routes are his least targeted depth backs up our claim that he was mostly asked to run simple short routes or deep routes, which require less getting in and out of breaks. But that wasn't the biggest factor that is making us disagree with the other analysts. To put it bluntly, he was clearly taking plays off when he knew he wasn't getting the ball. I know how that sounds, and I don't expect players to go 100% on every play. I had been there before where the play is a runaway, so you just negotiate with the corner to take the play off. But there comes a point where your quarterback is scrambling and you're just standing there, not trying to work your way open or anything like that. Or on go routes where you can see he is clearly not running full speed. I get that you can use tempo to throw off a corner, but this play right here, he is just jogging. While this can be something that can be corrected, it shouldn't even be an issue in a guy that you are considering taking with a first round pick. Overall, to us, it would be a bad decision to take Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round. He has a lot of physical talent and potential, but his limited route tree and not giving great effort on every play should give any good GM a pause. To us, he would be a great pickup in the second round and would excel at a place with an established number one receiver. He does have the potential to be a top receiver on a team, but there is little guarantee that he will ever actually get there. If your team is looking for a top receiver and you aren't sure which one they should take, I highly recommend you check out our draft videos on the big three receivers, starting with this one right here. But until next time, we are the RFL Show. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.